this week on Sport Fishing, we're back aboard the Sea Wolf out of Emeryville, California, fishing out of the bay. I know it doesn't look like we're up in Northern California. It's so flat and glassy today. Just got really lucky on the weather. Today we're gonna be starting off looking for rockfish, and if we get really lucky, maybe catch a link cut or two. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez, and I live to fish. All right. I have been fishing along the Pacific Coast my entire life. Oh! Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Another day of fine fishing with Danny on a Sunday. Part two. There we Nice one. I like it. There we go. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, 
Bob. That's a beauty. Nice one. <laughs> uh, Cool. I got a little fish, here he comes. My uh, ganyan broke, but I still got my fish. It's a little rockfish, B-52 bucktail, a strip of squid. You can see the fish ate it, looking up at it. That's what we're trying to catch. All right, let's take a little break from the action here aboard the Sea Wolf at the Fairlawn Islands and go to the tackle box and give you a good look at the gear you need for this type of fishing. This week in the Tackle Box, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what we're doing today. We're over at the Fairline Islands and we're fishing for lingcod and rockfish. When you think lingcod, you normally think you got to fish really heavy gear, but up here in Emeryville, especially at the Fairlawns, you really don't need to fish super heavy tackle. I like to fish lighter outfit, it makes it more fun to get a 20 pound lingcod in, or even the smaller ones too. So something like this, a level wine reel, I normally fish with 65 pound spectra and a top shot of like 40 pound. You don't need fluorocarbon because you're going to be fishing down deep, 100 feet, maybe 200 feet. So you can get away with just fishing straight mono. But you really do need the spectra down below so you have heavy align. And you want a nice sturdy rod. If you don't like to fish small reels like that, you can go up to something like this, 80 pound spectra. And again, 30 or 40 pound, I'd probably go straight 40 pound for the top shot and just put monofilament. Again, don't bother using fluorocarbon because you're going to be fishing deep. Now, my number one way to catch lingcods, especially up here in this shallower water for 100 feet or a little bit less, is to use a six ounce B-52 bucktail with a long single tail like this. This just works so good and it's so deadly on the lingcod. You want to drop this all the way down the bottom, bounce it around a little bit. If you don't get bit, wind it up about five, six cranks, stop, and then let it flutter, flutter down. Lots of times these lingcod will chase it as you're taking it away from them, or they'll sit there with their mouth open for it to come down when it comes down right on them. The two colors I like best for the B-52 would be chrome and glow in the dark works really good. Both white and red tails work out really nice. And these single tails are made by AA. They work out really good for this type of fishing. Now, if you're looking to catch a limit of rockfish and not concentrate on a big fish like a lingcod, then what you want to use is two B-52 bucktails, one ounce models in a double dropper loop rig with a large sinker, anywhere from eight ounces to 12 ounces. If you get in that deeper water, you're gonna need 16 ounces. Space them far apart so you can catch two fish at one time. And all you can do is put a little strip of squid on it, let it go all the, all the way to the bottom and just lift it up and down a little bit and let it flutter in the current and the rockfish will jump all over it. And another way to go to to catch a lingcod is to use a metal jig. Now I like using the eight and 10 ounce magic metal jigs. You're just gonna let these go all the way to the bottom, dart them straight back up as fast as you can, only about five or six cranks, stop and let them flutter back down. Kind of like you're working the bucktail and the lingcods will jump all over these as they go up and down in that water column right along the bottom. You have to be really close to the rocks to catch these rockfish. That's why they're called rockfish. They live right along the bottom. And this is the basic gear you're gonna need. You might wanna bring a few hooks too, in case you wanna fish with strips of hooks, but I really like using the bucktails. That way, if your bait comes off, you're still gonna catch fish because that bucktail is gonna flutter in the current and the fish will bite it. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Oh, hey, 
don't want to come up. Oh. Where's he at? Color! Oh, this is big. Nah. You don't need a gas. You don't need a gas. I think I do, though. Sam Cacho. Cacho. Nice. Six fish, six different colors. Nice. <laughs> six six different flavors. A bucktail down on the bottom got bit. Doesn't feel like a big fish, but it feels like a fish. And that's what's nice about fishing out here at the Fair Lawns. So many rockfish. It's pretty easy fishing. Let's see what I got here. There he is. There's color. Another little rockfish. There we go. All right, let's take a little break from the action here aboard the Sea Wolf and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious rockfish we're catching today. This week in the galley, we're back at Gladstones in Long Beach, California, right here in Rainbow Harbor, a beautiful area. Standing next to me is Chef Pete. He's helped us out in the past. And hey, Chef, thanks for having us back. Thank you very much, Dan. And what do you have in store for us today? I'm making a rockfish ceviche for you. Oh, cool. We've got some fresh rockfish. And uh, what we did was we uh, filleted it out and we marinated it in lime juice overnight for about 24 hours. It's just nice little pieces like this. Okay, so we've got the rockfish. And what we're going to do here is we're going to drain this off into this bowl right here, uh, reserving the lime juice because we're going to put a little bit of that lime juice back into our ceviche. So that's all I'm doing is just pouring that off. Would you marinate that? In lime juice. Just lime juice? Just straight lime juice. It kind of cooks it. Okay, uh, yeah. With all that acid that's in the, the lime juice, and you know, you can get creative and flavor it with lemon juice and orange juice and other things like that. So now I've got um, the actual marinated rockfish right here. I want to reserve the lime juice. The rest of the ingredients are just simple, like a pico de gallo, if you will. Mm. You've got chopped tomato. We're going to throw some of that in there. You've got some fresh onion. Throw some of that in there. Do you like to use white or red onions? I like, I like white onions myself. I think they're sweeter. I find, I find the red ones a little bit bitter. Here's jalapenos diced up really, really, really small. And uh, you know, like all chilies, be careful. All the heat is in that white rib meat and in the seeds. So I try to avoid that. And, uh, but I do like jalapeno. And then I've got some fresh cilantro right here. 
And uh, we're just gonna give this a little bit of mix. And like you said, the fish is basically already cooked since it's sat already overnight cooked, yeah. in the refrigerator. Now for me, just a, just a touch more of my juice back, just so it has a little, just has a little bit of a, a wetness to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, there, you, there you have it's a. It's done. It's done. <laughs> so we've got a nice little trick, uh, trick glass right here, supreme dish. Uh -huh. We'll fill this bad boy up here like this. Put it on a plate like this for you. Garnish with some fresh tortilla chips. And uh, at this point in time, if you'd like to, we can garnish that with an avocado. I was going to just eat it. I'm just going to eat it. I've got to have a little avocado on there too, right? Yeah. And there's a nice little garnish with avocado for you. Nice. Maybe a little bit more cilantro on the top of that, just for fun. And uh, a little bit of fresh lime. Finish it right up the end. And there you go. Ceviche. Oh, I got to try this. This is one of my favorite dishes. And Chef, like I was telling you, this is one of the dishes I hear from viewers a lot. They're asking how to make ceviche. And you know, when you look it up online, some recipes, there's all different kinds of things you can do to that. You can add orange juice. You can use serrano chilies. You can even use habanero chilies. Be careful, those are the hot ones. Really but they're very flavorful. And if you get that rib meat out and you get those seeds out of any chili, mm -hmm. that's where the heat is. And then you can start to taste the different uh, flavor profiles of different chilies. This um, is so good. Glad you like it. Any other tips for people? Uh, I can't think of any at the moment. Everything uh, fresh, that's what it's all about. You've caught some fresh fish, let's eat it fresh. Let's not let it sit around. And uh, I don't think, you know, for me, if you throw it in the freezer, there's other applications. I don't think that frozen fish makes a good ceviche. Sure. But it does, uh, depending on the fish, it'll come, it'll come off the grill nicely later in time. And I know you marinate this overnight. Is it mandatory overnight, or can you do it for like two, three hours? You could do it for, I would say, six, six, hours. six seven hours. You know, it kind of depends on the size of the, the meat that you cut up. So the smaller you cut it, the less time you need to marinate it. But oh. that would that could probably get away with six hours. No, but this one, is the, the flavor is so embedded in it, and I guess that's from overnight. Right. I, I never soaked it that long. That's cool. really good. Well, thanks. Cool. thanks, Chef. A pleasure. We're here at Gladstone's in Long Beach, California, Rainbow Harbor. Right behind us is Aquarium Pacific. Fairpoint Sport Fishing, just a beautiful area, come on down. Well, thanks again, Chef. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Here it comes, we got color. Daylight, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> daylight. Yeah. Nice one, I got the one you let go, buddy. This one's for Roberts. <laughs> Woohoo! Nice. Sea Wolf. Fishing with Dan Hernandez aboard the Sea Wolf. And it's a beautiful day, low swells, and look at what we got. Big old Ling Cod. Love it. Here we go. Here comes my fish right here. We call these Johnny Bass in LA. These guys call them yellows. These are nice little rockfish that taste good. Got them on the jig. 
All right, let's take a little break from the action, and when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. For this week's tip of the week, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we did today by the Sea Wolf. We were fishing around the Farallon Islands, and we had really good fishing on the rockfish. The lean cod, you really had to work at it, but the majority of the rockfish today was kind of unusual for the fish I'd done up here. It was all about using the live bait and the cut squid, and the number one rig the guys were using was just a basic shrimp fly rig like this. Two little shrimp flies, one anchovy on it, or one strip of squid with a one pound sinker fish right along the bottom. And those fish were stacked up deep on the bottom. They weren't right yeah. on the bottom lots of times. Yeah, we had fish anywhere from 20 to 60, 70 feet off of the bottom, just fanned out, looked like feeder, feeding fish, so. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And this is John, the owner operator of the Sea Wolf. Runs a great operation here out of Emeryville. And you can just see how beautiful of a day it was. I've been up here lots of times. This was a postcard type day. Look at the beautiful view. Golden Gate Bridge right behind us. It's one of the joys of coming to fish up here is not just the fishing, but the experience, the whole you know, adventure of fishing up in the Bay Area. It was lots of fun. If you're from Southern California or wherever you are around the country, you've never been fishing up here out of Emeryville in the Bay Area, you need to come try a trip here. You never know what to expect. We've caught everything up here from albacore salmon, lean cod rockfish. It's always different. It's always a great adventure. And fishing with John and the crew up here is always a lot of fun. Anything you want to tell the guys, John? Nope, just come fishing. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so on behalf of John, the crew of the Sea Wolf, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing. And I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing. <laughs>